Hey, it's Noah. and welcome back to iHollywood TV, where for caregivers or relatives who watch the progression of a disease called frontotemporal dementia, or FTD, in a family member, it can feel like a stranger has moved into the household. Just in time for World FTD Awareness Week, we are joined today by Deb, who has been a caregiver to someone with FTD, and Dr. Tiffany Chow, Vice President of Clinical Development at Elector and a Neurologist Expert in Dementia. Good morning, ladies. So nice to have you on the show. Thank you for having Thank us, you. Noah. Now, first off, Dr. Chow, what are some of these signs of FTD and how is this disease different than Alzheimer's? Educate our audience this morning. Happy to do so. FTD, or frontotemporal dementia, is, as it says it is, something that affects the frontal part of the brain, the front half of the brain, whereas Alzheimer's disease concentrates more on the other half of the brain. Alzheimer's disease is generally seen in people who have hit their 70s, and the key feature is memory loss. I think a lot of people are aware of Alzheimer's disease because it affects millions of people in the U.S. FTD, on the other hand, is more rare, 60,000 compared to those millions. And because the front of the brain handles your judgment, your social skills, how you present yourself to the world, your personality, when frontotemporal dementia hits, you seem like a different person to those who know you very well. It's devastating because it's hitting while you are in your 50s or even earlier in life, when you're raising a family, when you're holding a job, when you have important roles in your community, in your social circle. And it's hard for people to think of dementia in a person so young. So there's a long mm -hmm. lag to diagnosis for some people where they get misdiagnosed with a midlife crisis or a psychiatric illness instead of frontotemporal dementia. You know, for a lot of the viewers watching or for anyone that follows me on social media, they know that my grandmother passed away on August 19th from dementia. We wondered if she had FTD. She was never diagnosed with FTD specifically, but she had a form of dementia that really, you know, made her into something that she was not, you know, it, uh, towards the end of her um, you know, life here on earth. She was very weak. She was someone that none of us even knew. That was not the Mimi that I knew and that my entire family knew and that my grandfather, you know, he, th th that's not the wife that he knew. But, you know, it, th this disease really changes you and it changes your appearance and how you, you know, go in your daily life. But it leads me to coming to you, Deb. You know, tell us your experience caring for a loved one with FTD. My experience started out very young. Um, my loved one, Tommy, my husband, at the age of 38, started showing signs. Um, they were started out little signs, but it all looking back, that's when we noticed it. And we owned and operated an automotive business, and um, we were so we had two young children. Um, we slowly started seeing a decline in him. Um, he was very adamant and wonderful. He loved to do demolition derbies. Every weekend we would go to demolition derbies. Um, we saw that that started changing. He no longer wanted to do that. He also had a decline in his work ethic. Um, we noticed that he could not complete tasks during the day. He no longer could get his work done. Um, so we decided to close the business and he started working for other people. Little by little, we noticed that there was a change in his um, personality. He would have paranoia and delusional episodes. Um, he could only keep a job like for a year or two, um, and it started getting worse and worse. We would go to doctors. They would diagnose us with um, all different types of different things. Different medicines were prescribed. Um, and through the years, we he could keep jobs. Like I said, little by little, it dwindled into hardly any job keeping. By 2015, um, he no longer could keep a job. Um, my daughter was a senior in high school and I was still having to work full time. And so because of his delusionals, paranoia and his behaviorals, we had to make the decision that we had to have him um, put into a nursing home. Um, because it was unsafe for him to be able to stay home alone. We couldn't find anybody to help us um, because at the young age of 44, um, those home health cares and stuff do not realize what's actually happening to a young man at that age. So he was put mm -hmm. into a nursing home and um, it is so devastating to our family, um, your finances, your um, just family uh, 
function. And can you imagine mm-hmm. also this? Uh, you marry somebody in 1991 and you look at their eyes in 2015 and you don't know who that person is behind those eyes that you married. It is a devastating disease, but uh, you just have to keep moving forward and love them where they're at. Absolutely. And I'm so sorry, Deb, that you had to go through that. And, you know, I'm sorry to anyone that's watching that's going through something similar to this. Dementia is the worst way to go. And I never wish it on my worst enemy. And Deb, you know, like you were saying, you know, he was in the nursing home. Um, And two, just from this experience of my grandmother having dementia, the nursing home, it's so expensive. Can we talk about the prices? Like, I don't know how low income families can afford this when their loved ones get this type of disease. You know, I mean, I, I talked about it behind closed doors and now, you know, I'm talking about it here on air with you guys, but you know, like I think it's more expensive to put them in a nursing home than to have someone come into your home. I I mean, I could be totally wrong, but just the expense stab. Absolutely. Um, we actually um, had to do the spend down. And um, so half all of his retirement, half of my retirement went along with, you know, all of our financials. Um, and so by the time we did the spend down, then he got to be able to go on to Medicare and Medicaid. And then I got to uh, rebuild my wealth. And so you as a, mm-hmm. you know, at the age of 40, Who's going to expect that you're going to be going into a nursing home? So this affects us so young, and um, it's devastating. Now, Dr. Chow, I want to come back to you. What are some reasons, you know, why a person may consider genetic testing for FTD? In FTD, up to 40% of persons with FTD have Mm -hmm. a genetic mutation that has caused the illness. And these genetic mutations are inheritable. Another way of saying that is that a person living with FTD who has a genetic mutation has a 50-50 chance of passing it on to each of their children. This is very sobering news. Mm-hmm. And this is why when a specialist or a, or a family doctor makes the diagnosis of frontotemporal dementia, part of the essential conversation, along with tips on how to navigate the financial aspects of the illness would be to see a genetic counselor, to decide as a family whether genetic testing is reasonable, that you know what you want to do with the results of that genetic testing can be very important. Mm -hmm. Now, Dr. Chow, I think you, you know, told us some of the signs of what to look for in FTD, but tell us more signs and really tell us what age can you get FTD and is there a specific age that you can get tested, you know, genetic testing for FTD? Great questions. So most of our diagnosed patients with FTD are in their 50s. Now, Tommy was different. He was only 38. And that is possible, depending on the genetic mutation causing the FTD. So for anyone with an early onset dementia, way before the 70s, Mm -hmm. FTD should be on the differential diagnosis. I usually recommend that the person who has met all of the diagnostic criteria for FTD, so Mm -hmm. they've had a market change in their behavior, their personality, their judgment, their ability to plan ahead, stick to a plan, Mm. complete tasks, to organize which thing comes first, socks before shoes, things like that. Those are all more confirmatory of the diagnosis. And once a person has the diagnosis, that person in the family should get the genetic testing. Because if that person doesn't have the genetic mutation, it's highly unlikely that anybody else in the family needs to be tested. It is once you have an FTD diagnosis that that person should get the genetic testing. And based on the results of that, then other descendants may want to have themselves tested as well. Now, doctor, besides genetic testing, what research is also being done to help people with this affliction? There are multiple lines of research going on to either make sure we understand how the course of illness goes so that we can advise families what to expect how to keep patients safe, Mm -hmm. anticipate the need for a transition into a a nursing home. Um, And there are clinical trials ongoing of potential treatments. It's very Mm -hmm. noteworthy that at this time, there is not yet an FDA approved treatment 
that is specific to frontotemporal dementia. There is more information available on everything that we've mentioned thus far at learnftd.com. Learnftd.com. We will have that website appearing below you guys. Now, Thank real you. quick, Deb, what do you really want the people and caregivers to know about living with FTD? I just want you to all know to be present. Um, it is a long journey and you just have to meet your loved one where they're at. And don't be afraid of genetic testing. Our family chose to do genetic testing because we are living it and we are going to be knowledge is power. We are living this and we are being loud and proud because we want drug companies, we want doctors, we want everybody to listen to us and we wanna find a treatment for the future for our kids, our grandkids and our nieces and nephews. We're here to be loud and we want everyone to know that there is gonna be a future future for FTD and a treatment. Yes. Oh, Deb, I love that. That gives us so much hope for, you know, medicines that people can take and for, uh, you know, cures for people to have so, you know, they can live longer and they don't just have to pass away from this terrible, terrible, you know, disease of dementia. Dr. Chow and Deb, thank you so much for your time, ladies. Thank you for educating our audience on this topic because I think, you know, we hear the word dementia and we just don't learn enough about it. So thank you, ladies, so much for coming on my show. Thanks, thank you Noah. very much. Thank you. Y'all take care. Have a great day.